Thanks, guys. So Matt, how many of you guys in the room believe in what this dude's doing? Better be all of you, right? <laughs> how many want to make a crap ton of money doing it? Come on now. Yeah? OK, cool. So the, the hardest thing for you guys, and for me, especially when I was first starting out, you guys are on the phone like 24-7, right? Yes. Nonstop, 18 hours a day, hopefully, right, Cody? <laughs> 23, hours. <laughs> 23 hours a day, you're on the phone. The hardest part about doing that is staying consistent, right? Making phone calls sucks. Taking inbound calls sucks. Let's be real. The process is not fun unless you make it fun. The easiest way for me to make it fun when I was doing outbound dials on age leads or I know Cody did this when he was going door to door cold. Imagine doing that. Imagine knocking on an insurance agency and being like, hey, you want some marketing? No? OK, sorry. All right. So what I did was I monetized every portion of the process. When you guys get on a phone call with somebody, you should know how much that phone call is worth to you. That will keep you on the phone longer. That will push you towards the sale faster. Okay? People just make aimless dials, whether they're selling coaching, marketing, they're selling insurance, right? And they don't set a value. I knew how much every phone call was worth, every door knock, every rebuttal that they gave me, every close, every no show. Right? You guys set appointments and they don't show up? That's worth something, money wise. That's getting deposited into your account. Not today, obviously, but somewhere down the road. So, what I would challenge you guys to do is based on your numbers, your conversion, how well you sell, your closing ratio, your week to week goals over there, right? Assign monetary values to every portion of your process. How many of you guys get referrals on what you're doing? It should be all of you. Okay? How much is a referral worth? Let's push to ask for them. I knew that every referral I got was worth about three to four hundred dollars. If you knew that, how many would get like 20 referrals per call? <laughs> right? It just makes sense. And again, that money's not going to hit your account right away, but it's going to change your mindset to be able to push further every single phone call that you make. You'll stay on the phone longer. You'll stay here later. You'll want to put in the time because every time you make a phone call, even if it's a dollar, how many phone calls are you making a day? 500, 1,000, right? In a given week, a month, multiply it. The number's crazy. So back into your income, how much each activity is worth, and I promise you guys will slay it each and every day that you're in this office. That's all I got. Oh, you have a beat, okay? I want to also use this time uh, to ask Pete couple questions um, on, on, on and, 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 and think about this, right? This is a golden opportunity. Do not let this pass by. If you've got an idea, you've got a question, right? Don't be ashamed to ask. Right now is the time. If you're like, dude, I need to get better at X or Y, now's the time to ask, okay? So who wants to speak up and ask a question first? Okay, Colin, right behind you, Dylan. How do you go about building value in your product? So my value comes from the end result. I'll give you an example, a real quick one, from my breakout at um, SWAT. You guys know what a term policy is for insurance, right? It expires at the end, right? Most people think that's the cheapest product that you can sell. Let's say a $500,000 term product is 50 bucks a month. To me, it's the most expensive. 2% of term policies typically pay out. So if they pay 50 bucks a month for 30 years, right? That's like 18 grand. Well, the end result of that is they're probably not gonna die and they're gonna lose $18,000. So how much are they gonna lose by not upselling themselves to a fire ticket or upselling themselves to an extended coaching program? Sell based on the end result, not the initial price or perceived value. Everything is expensive to somebody. If you told me this chair was like 400 bucks, that's arbitrary. Tell me what the chair is gonna do for me and I'll pay 1,000. Doesn't matter, right? So pitch on the end result, not the perceived value of the product. Does that make sense? Yeah, I like it. All right, who's next? Knowing what we do here, what's a way that our team could sound different than other marketers or other trainers quickly so we can keep attention? That's a great question. Sound different. So give me an example. Who's your competition? Well, I'll do it for like the marketing team. It'd be other lead vendors, other marketing 
organizations, how could you know we sound different than just a lead vendor because we do everything? Or the dude in his basement with a laptop. Right. Right. I think the big thing is one the expertise. I I haven't seen anything like Landon before, right? Me neither. <laughs> Nobody, right? So I would I would spend. Uh, we were talking about this last night at dinner about like talk time on the phone and stuff like that. Our agents, when we're building up the value of like our final expense product, which in all honesty is a commodity. Anybody can sling a final expense product, right? It doesn't matter. Spending our agents spend 26 minutes roughly building the value of what we do before we even deliver a quote or a product. So we don't talk about anything except what we've done to help X, Y, and Z seniors in our case across the country, how many we've helped, what the product has done for them, how they call us begging and pleading for the product, et cetera. So I would spend more time instead of selling the actual product, building up Landon, building up Cody, edification of what the product is doing for the client, again at the end, right, is what people want to buy. They don't want to buy a Facebook lead, they want to buy an experience with you guys and they want to buy an end result. So if you guys can show them what you've done for them in that initial, and I'm not saying like I don't want to mess up your scripts, but in that initial like 10 to 20 minutes on the phone, don't deliver anything. No quote, no, no product. Build up the value of what you guys are providing first and then go after the close. Mm. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. I work with a lot of agents on a daily basis. Different capacity now, but for you, one thing I, I know an agent, and I know their mind, I know what they need, I know the importance of how they think. So what I do is I listen and I ask questions. One thing about insurance agents, they love to talk. They're salesmen. And if you listen, you can take the information that they give you and it'll allow you to be able to use, it'll give you the information you need to get a deal done, right? So when someone comes in and meets with us, maybe it's about joining our team. I'll ask pointed questions that give me sp critical information about what they're going through, what they're doing, and what they have, and then I use that to create a solution for them. So I think asking questions and understanding where they are in their journey, what type of lead have they worked, and then understanding you know, those different pieces and then tying it all together. So if I meet with someone and I know they're coming from a specific career program and they and I, under, I know their lead program I know everything about it right I don't talk about it I listen to them I already know what their problems are and then I just you just have to have the solution and then I listen I collect the information and then I provide a solution and then honestly with agents you got to be realistic and open with them if you get someone and they're like oh I'm interested in trying out an order of your Facebook leads that's Quite honestly, like, and you have to have that conversation that says, listen, like, when I tell this to any agent, and that's, again, what Pete said, using affiliation, people that you work with, like, we're a client, like, leverage, Justin brought those business with you. You can start leveraging names through your conversations. Cody, Landon, Pete, Tyler, Justin, and that brings credibility to the result. But it's eight weeks. If an agent isn't willing to buy leads for a, 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 at least eight weeks, to test the lead, and they call me and try to say a lead's not good. I, I literally like don't even how long how many how many orders did you order in a row? Oh, two. Don't talk to me. Mm. It's eight weeks, and that's what we tell our agents. Yeah. After eight weeks, if you try a source and you're not happy, then you make a decision. But it's not just one source; it's multiple, right? And that's what Landon and I were talking about last night. There's this all-encompassing world, and that's what you guys are starting to do that is different than other people. You're not just a one-trick pony. You do multiple things very well, and that's what I would, that, that's what I would put. Boom, that's good. I get pitched all the time in my position at Innovative on marketing and groups like similar to what you guys do. And I'll say the one fatal flaw that most groups do is what Tyler said in the beginning, is just not listening. A lot of times, before they even know what my pain points are, they're telling me how great they are at X. Well, maybe I don't need X. You never even figured that out by having the conversation with me first. So it's good to emphasize what you're great at, but make sure that you're 
tailor your pitch based off of what you heard them say to you. Like, if they're telling you that their pain point is direct mail and all you're going to do is focus on Facebook or telemarketing, you're not addressing their, so their thing. I mean, and maybe you are in a way by spinning it over to that, but at the same time, if I don't feel like I'm being heard, like, I'm like, oh, well, this guy's just going to ramble on about how great they are again, definitely not going to buy from this guy, and then that's the end of the conversation. Because mm. he never discovered where my pain was. And by ha asking those open-ended questions in the beginning and embracing that conversation, one, that's going to increase the amount of time that you're on the phone with the client, which, as we all know, the more time you're on the phone with the client, that leads to higher conversion rates. So the more you know about them, the easier it will be to transition into talking about how great your products are and what you guys can do to help solve those problems. Boom. All right. Facebook lead, understanding the value of, or like any lead, but like digital leads, shelf life, not as long mm -hmm. as a direct mail lead. Does not mean the quality isn't as strong. It just means you have to approach it differently. So when you're talking to someone and they are used to direct mail, rather than just saying, well, hey, why don't you try this? You need to understand how direct mail works. A little bit longer shelf life, tougher to get a hold of. Maybe you have to get, you have to beat the streets to really pull everything out of a direct mail piece. So it's a harder concept and process. If you do digital marketing, it's easier, but you have to be more responsive and you have to be more active. So you have to get on it right away. You have to have a system in place. So when that lead's being generated, you're on top of it immediately. So explaining to them how to act to understand, like if you meet someone and they're mainly doing direct mail, don't just get the order. Explain to them, and you could even, out, I'm sure you guys have th thought through this, but even having like a, one thing that one vendor did before that was really cool is they would actually send after you placed an order, like a, basically like a script and a process to how to work it correctly. And say, hey, if you follow these bullet points, you'll have success. So I think sometimes too, asking the questions, you collect the information. If you're getting an agent that only works direct mail, you're gonna have to explain how to appropriately work and set the expectation correctly, and then they'll have better results. Thank you guys, appreciate that. All right, now let's jump into uh, Nick. What do you want to do for energy, man? Also directors, you can go ahead and head to the uh, 850 SAM meeting. Okay, we're gonna do some energy, and then uh, Tyler and the guys, uh, I'll probably have Derek walk you guys over to, to, to meet with my dad. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there, click on it, see you in there. If you had to help an agent out there that's struggling, they're, 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 they're not where they wanna be yet, um, and maybe, maybe they're new, but they're like, man, I'm, I may quit. I'm thinking about it. Like, I'm not making any money. What advice would you